minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and lift off at a dragon turn to 8, 1, 5, 40. of science and cargo take flight on NASA's SpaceX 30th commercial resupply services mission. Falcon 9 at 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Pitching down range, hearing good calls of performance. Nominal trajectory as Falcon 9 and Dragon arc out to the northeast. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And during ascent, we will tilt our gimbal our engines, guiding the rocket into what we call a gravity turn. Through this turn, the vehicle is flying both up and horizontally, nominal. horizontally away from the launch pad. Now, this rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to make it to orbit and avoid being pulled back down to Earth. So moments ago, we did throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure, in just a couple seconds. Max Q. There was that call out for max Q. And coming up, we have a few events in quick succession, starting with main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, second engine startup one, and the start of the boost back burn for the first stage. And back is chilling. There's the call out. The MVAC engine on the second stage is chilling in, getting ready for startup. Now, the first of these events is ma main engine cutoff, or MECO, where the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage will shut down in preparation for stage separation, which is where stage one and two will separate from each other with the first stage making its way back down to Earth and the second stage uh, performing second engine start one which is where we ignite that single Merlin vacuum engine on board the second stage. Now the boost back burn will then start on the first stage. This burn helps assist the vehicle flip back around and reorient, reorient itself back to land. Nico starting in just a couple seconds. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one boost back startup. There you heard and saw those events happening back to back. Awesome views of the first stage flipping back around as it performs its boost back burn. Again, we had main engine cutoff of the first stage, stage separation, second engine start on the second stage, and that first stage doing the awesome flip as it starts its boost back burn. Now this burn is a little under a minute, so we have about 20 seconds left in this burn. And about three minutes after that, we will have two additional burns on the first stage to prepare to land back at landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. We are at T plus three minutes and 30 seconds here in today's mission. CRS-30 is SpaceX's- Stage one boost back shutdown. There is that confirmation for the boost back shutdown of oh, the first stage. A nominal trajectory. And a nominal trajectory. As again, CRS-30 is SpaceX's 27th launch this year. And we are coming up on the entry burn of the first stage as well as second engine cutoff. On those live views of the first stage, you can see the attitude control system creating those beautiful puffs of white gas and that's nitrogen from the cold gas thrusters of the attitude control system. And around T plus six minutes and 30 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn. And for the entry burn, we relight three of the M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center engine nine, followed shortly by engines one and five, which slows the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which helps us to recover and reuse the first stage. The second stage on the right, you can see 
beautiful views of the earth in the background and that Merlin vacuum engine heating up as it performs its burn. Again, we are a little over a minute to the start of our first stage entry burn. You can see the first stage on those live views on your left with two of the four hypersonic grid fins deployed, helping steer that first stage down as it makes its way back home to Earth. Now you can see the telemetry on the bottom left and right hands of your screen. The right-hand side is the second stage carrying our Dragon capsule, and the left-hand side is the first stage. You can see the second stage speeding up as it is performing its burn, and the first stage is coming back down towards the Earth's atmosphere with the altitude decreasing. Really cool views from the attitude control system of the first stage. Just about 20 seconds from the start of our first stage entry burn, we should be able to see really cool views of that burn from those views on the left of your screen. Stage one entry burn startup. There is the start of the stage one entry burn. And this is a three engine burn on the first stage of Falcon 9. Stage one entry burn shut down. There you stage saw. Stage one FTS has saved. Really cool views of the end of the first stage entry burn and Both the flight. stages, nominal trajectory. And the call outs for nominal trajectory and the flight termination system being saved. Now the first stage that is supporting today's mission will be has just performed this entry burn for the sixth time. Falcon 9 is the world's first orbital class reusable rocket and this allows SpaceX to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket which in turn drives stage down one transonic drives down the cost of access to space. Now coming up we have that landing burn starting in just a few moments. There is the start of stage one landing burn. Start of that landing burn. Really cool view of Cape Canaveral coast. Stage one landing leg deploy. Wow, wonderful views of that first stage landing. Stage one landing confirmed. Back at landing zone one. Looking pristine there, and there you have it. That landing marks SpaceX's 286 recovery of an orbital class rocket, including the first stage landings for Falcon stage 9 two FTS has saved. and Heavy. You heard that call out that stage two FTS is safe, getting ready for second engine cutoff here in just under 10 seconds. MVAC shut down. There is that second engine cutoff with the MVAC shutdown call out, waiting for confirmation of a good orbital Nominal insertion. Nominal orbit insertion. There is that confirmation of good orbit. It looks like we are on track for Dragon separation in just a few minutes, just before the T plus 12 minute mark. It has been a great launch so far. As I mentioned earlier, today's launch was the first for our upgraded Dragon to be flying from Slick 40 after we stopped flying the older, dra older version of Dragon back in 2020. And to support our growing launch manifest, we've made new upgrades to Space Launch Complex 40, including a brand new tower and access arm, which enables more efficient late load operations as well as human spaceflight missions. And with these updates, we are on our way to having two launch pads capable of supporting flying humans to space. 
can see really cool views of the MVAC engine and the earth in the background from the second stage. And in addition to flying cargo to support crew on board the space station, SpaceX also enables researchers the opportunity to fly critical science to orbit on Dragon, which has carried over 1,000 research experiments to and from low Earth orbit and the International Space Station since 2012. Enabling research in space paves the way for us to explore beyond Earth and make life multiplanetary. And now we are waiting for Dragon to separate from Falcon 9's second stage. To recap so far, we had an on-time liftoff at 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time. Everything has proceeded nominally so far. Stage separation occurred at about two and a half minutes into flight, and that was followed by a successful landing of Falcon 9's first stage at Landing Zone 1 back in Cape Canaveral, Florida. That was the sixth landing for that particular Falcon 9 first stage, and for those of you following along, this Dragon capsule has also supported CRS-22, CRS-24, and CRS-27, which were three additional cargo resupply missions to the International Space Station. At about T plus eight and a half minutes, we had a successful second engine cutoff, followed by confirmation of a good orbital insertion. The vehicle is now coasting with Dragon attached and we are just about 30 seconds away from spacecraft separation. We're seeing great views from the second stage with the Earth and the Sun in the background as it prepares to separate Dragon so that Dragon can begin its journey to the International Space Station. Just a few seconds from payload deployment. You can see Dragon floating away there. It's very exciting to see Dragon is drifting away from Falcon 9 second stage there, confirming good spacecraft separation. Now SpaceX is honored to be a part of NASA's Commercial Resupply Services Initiative to deliver critical cargo to the space station. And we thank NASA for entrusting us with today's mission. For those of you following along, you'll know that this mission marks our 27th of the year. Congratulations to the SpaceX team. We're just in March and we're already launched in partnership with NASA missions like Axiom 3, Cygnus, and PACE, Intuitive Machines, Crew A, and more. You can check spacex.com slash launches for up-to-date missions and schedules. But that will do it for me here in Hawthorne. But I'm handing it over to Gary to take us through nose co Dragon Nose Cone opening. Gary? Hey, thank you, Yome. We were following along from here in Mission Control Houston, a wonderful launch of Dragon from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Great to see Dragon in orbit and starting its journey on the way to the International Space Station. We're continuing our coverage here in Mission Control Houston, awaiting for the nose cone to deploy. The nose cone is at the very tip of the Dragon spacecraft. Once deployed, exposes the four forward bulkhead Dracos. These Draco thrusters will execute the series of maneuvers necessary to raise its orbit and meet up with the destination of Dragon's launch today, the International Space Station. Of course, after separation, it is carrying three tons of supplies, including science, as well as some food to the International Space Station. A common question we get is what sorts of treats and food are inside Dragon that the Expedition 70 crew aboard station is awaiting. We did receive word that there is a fresh food kit, including some fruits and vegetables like citrus, apples, and cherry tomatoes inside Dragon right now. There's also two crew requested coffee kits and 60, that's six zero, bulk overwrap bags. These are standard bobs containing some standard um, food menu items as well as some crew preference choices. <laughs> 